There's no mister. It's just Higgins, sir. <laughs> The National Broadcasting Company presents a new comedy series, It's Higgins, Sir, created and transcribed by Paul Harrison, and starring Harry McNaughton as Higgins. <laughs> a man's home is his castle, and in the sacred precincts of his home, he is the master, monarch of all he surveys. That's the theory, at any rate. Let's join the Roberts family now and see what happens to the master in his castle. Oh, Higgins. Uh, yes, Mrs. Roberts. Higgins, has the evening paper come yet? Yes, madam, it's right there, next to Mr. Roberts' easy chair. He likes to find it there when he comes home. I want to cut out today's recipe. Before Mr. Roberts reads the paper, madam? He doesn't read the woman's page. Well, I'm going to cut the recipe out anyway. What's on the other side of it today? On one side, madam, Miss Jane Russell. On the other, shish kebabs. <laughs> well, he can see Jane Russell any time. Yes. But a good recipe for shish kebabs is hard to find. Really? Hey, Mom, is it okay if I borrow this tie of pops for tonight? I don't have one to go with my new blue serge suit. Oh, I don't know, dear. That's his nice new blue tie. Well, if you'll take extra good care of it, I don't think Daddy will mind. Remember the tie you wore to the party two weeks ago, Master Thomas? I didn't hurt Pop's tie that time. I know, but the next time Mr. Roberts picked it up, he didn't know whether to wear it or eat it. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that won't happen again. You go ahead and wear it, Tommy. Okay, Mom. Say, Mother, did you ask Daddy about the car when he called this afternoon? Pudgy and I have a date. Oh, dear, no. I forgot to speak to him about it. But, Mom... Mother, my date tonight. Oh, I'm sure Daddy won't mind if you drive very carefully. Miss Nancy, may I remind you that Mr. Roberts said he wanted to give you a driving lesson before you used the car again? Oh, gosh, I passed the state driving test six months ago. I've been driving for 15 years, and Daddy still closes his eyes every time I turn a corner. Mm -hmm. I think you have that wrong, madam. I believe Mr. Roberts says you close your eyes. <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, Mother gave me a lesson yesterday... She helped me with my parking. Parking? Oh, yes, that has improved. You saw me park last night? Certainly. You parked and then you turned out the lights. <gasps> oh, yes, indeed. You parked very well. Apparently, Master Pudgy thought so, too. It was so sweet the way he congratulated you. <laughs> yes. Boy, I wish I'd been awake. <laughs> with a flashlight. I'm going upstairs and dress. And I'll get even with you, Tommy. That wasn't nice, Tommy. Well, my white shirt needs a button sewed on it. Can you do it now? Of course, dear. Where is it? It's upstairs. Come on, I'll show you. All right. Oh, dear. I do hope Mr. Roberts comes home in a jovial mood. Things aren't exactly going his way today. Ah, oh, good evening, Mr. Roberts. Where is everybody? Upstairs, sir. And Miss Deborah is spending the night with a friend. I believe Miss Lucille. Higgins, you're looking at a very lucky man. Are you referring to your luck at the office, sir? Or your luck, such as it is, here at home? At the office. I almost got hooked into going on a business trip with Mr. Bascom. Mr. Bascom? Your employer, sir? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the old fuddy duddy's going on a trip to Dewey Falls, and he wanted me to go along. You didn't want to go, sir? Higgins going on a trip with Mr. Bascom is about as exciting as helping a fat lady over a barbed wire fence. <laughs> Hat lady over a barbed wire fence Odd sort of hobby I was only using that as a figure of speech Yes, sir, figure of speech Yes, fat lady You prefer that type of figure, sir? Bascom is horrible on a business trip, Higgins For one thing, he's on a diet Nothing but cottage cheese, crackers, and milk My gracious, what a dull diet All white how, how does he get color into his meals? Oh, once in a while, when he wants to go on a tear, he dips his crackers in ketchup. No. Oh, some traveling companion. He doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke, and he goes to bed every night at 9.30. Mm, my word, sir, what does he do for excitement? Oh, of course, yes, he helps fat ladies over barbed wire fences. <laughs> yes, I remember. No, Higgins, Mr. Bascom doesn't do that. Oh, the worst part about Bascom is that 
that going to bed at 9.30. I hate to go to bed that early. But can't you get a room of your own, sir, in the hotel, sir? Rent two rooms? Yes. On the expense account? Mm-hmm. Oh, and that's old thrifty bathroom. A double room with bath, and I'd lie there and listen to him snore. I'd much rather be at home, my castle, where I'm the lord and master. Well, where's my paper, Higgins? Here you are, sir. You know, I think I'll take Mrs. Roberts to a movie tonight. Isn't that rather a long walk, sir? Walk? Yeah. Who said I was going to walk? We'll just jump in the car after dinner. Jump in the car, sir? You may have quite a long jump, sir. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, here's, the, here's the movie page. I wouldn't go to a movie, sir. Why not? Haven't you heard, sir? Radio is better than ever. Yeah. Yeah, well... I... Higgins. Yes, sir. There's a hole in my paper. A hole, sir? Hole. May I suggest termites? <laughs> you may, but I won't believe it. Just look at this picture of Jane Russell. There's nothing left but her feet. Where's the rest? Mm-hmm. How do you know it's Jane Russell, sir? I'd know those ankles anywhere. <laughs> now, now, who could have cut something out of this paper? It was Mrs. Roberts, sir. She cut out a recipe for shish kebab. Oh, that silly. Shish kebab is just pieces of lamb stuck on a flaming sword. Who needs a recipe for that? No, I don't know, sir, but I imagine it's quite difficult to cook a flaming sword. <laughs> hiya, Pop. Oh, hiya, son. Hi. Are you wearing my brand new blue tie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks good on me. <laughs> just put it on. Take it off. Oh, Pop, Mom said I could wear it. I'm going to a party tonight. Take it off. I don't enjoy wearing what you eat. But Mom said I... I really did say you could wear it, dear. I don't think there's anything wrong in his wearing it. No, you wouldn't think so. It's not your tie. Do I tell Nancy she can wear your clothes? Do I invite her to wear your... your... Whatchamacallit? Why, Philip, I haven't worn those in years. <laughs> well, all right. Do you mind if I leave, sir? I feel a blush coming on. <laughs> oh, good evening, Daddy. Oh, good evening, Nancy. Uh, could I have the keys, Daddy? Keys? What keys? Uh, for the car. Gee, didn't Mother tell you? No, dear. I just this minute came downstairs. Uh, I'm planning on using the car this evening, Nancy. I want to go to a movie tonight. Oh, but, Daddy, all the kids are going with me. I've already called and told them I had the car. Well, you'll just have to call your friends and tell them you don't have the car. Now, Philip, we don't need to go to a movie tonight. We have other plans for this evening. And besides, Nancy isn't to blame. I told her she could have the car. Well... Well, I certainly get consulted about things around here. Tommy takes my ties, Nancy takes my car. People cut big holes in my evening paper. Now, will someone be good enough to tell me one single advantage I have in being the so-called head of the family? Oh, yes, sir. You're the first one to use the bathroom in the morning, sir. Uh Uh-huh. And just how did I get this advantage? You locked the bathroom door at night and slept with the key under your pillow. (laughs) Exactly. Oh, dear, I forgot. The Millers are picking us up after dinner for an evening of canasta. Elizabeth? Mm Mm-hmm. Canasta? Yes. With the Millers? Yes. Oh, I'm going to shoot myself. (laughs) Elizabeth, you know very well I can't stand the Millers. Why didn't you tell me about it when I came home so that I could go back to the office? Now, dear, you always fuss about going out, and then you end up by enjoying yourself. Oh, oh, those Millers. Jim Miller with one blue eye and one brown eye. And Alice Miller always knitting sweaters for him. Half blue and half brown to match his eyes. My word, one blue eye and one brown eye, sir. My word, can you imagine one eye looking at the other and saying, I say, stranger, what are you doing in this man's head? (laughs) Well, excuse me, dear, but the children have to finish dressing. Come on, Tommy and Nancy. And Philip, you'd better come along and get dressed, too. Hey, get dressed, get dressed. Don't even bother to tell me what they're going to do. Oh, don't worry about old Pop. No, no. He'll go along with the gag. They walk over me just as though I'm a doormat. Doormat, sir? Do you think they'd catch the sarcasm, sir, if you had a shaggy sweater made for yourself with the word welcome written right across the chest? (laughs) No, I don't. And I won't lie down in front of the door to make my point either. But I will do something to teach Mrs. Roberts a lesson. You will, sir? Yes, sir. Something to make her realize she can't go ahead and make social engagements for me without asking. Yes, sir, these Miller people sound even duller than Mr. Bascom. Yeah, Mr. Bascom, Mr. Uh, B- That's it, Bascom. 
ask him? Yeah, that's the solution, Higgins. Oh, Higgins, your brain is as sharp as a tack. Sharp as a tack, sir? Sharp as a tack. I must warn my barber. He might stab himself. <laughs> yes, I'll show Mrs. Roberts I run my own affairs. I'll tell her. Hello? Hello, Mr. Bascom. <laughs> yes, yes, this is Phil, huh? Say, I've been thinking it over, and, uh... Well, I've decided to go to Dewey Falls with you. Oh, yes, sir, the good of the business comes first. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Mr. Bascom. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yes, sir, the usual double room. Yes, sir, I'll pick up a pint of cottage cheese. <laughs> yes, sir, I'll meet you at 11.30 at, at the station. Goodbye. I say, aren't you clever, sir? That will show Mrs. Roberts that you're the master of your own fate. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Now let's see her drag me off to the Millers. I'll show them who's the head of this house. Phil, hmm? dinner will be ready in a moment. Oh, Elizabeth, Ann. I have something I want to tell you. I, I, I forgot to tell you. Well, you know how that is, dear. Oh. Hello? Oh, hello, Alice. It's the Millers, dear. Oh. Uh. What? Jim doesn't want to play canasta tonight. Oh, I see. He'd rather go to the movies? Which picture? Jane Russell's new one. They want to go see her? Oh, picture? yes. I think Phil will love it. Oh. All right. Pick us up about 8 30. Yes. Goodbye. They don't want to play cards? They want to go to the movies, huh? Yes. Now, aren't you sorry you got so excited about going out tonight? And about the car? They're picking us up and driving us to the theater. Well, sir. Which is it to be, Jane Russell or cottage cheese? <laughs> Higgins, stop it. What was it you wanted to tell me, dear? You said it was something you forgot. Oh, yes. Elizabeth, I, I should have told you sooner, but uh, I'm leaving tonight on a business trip with Mr. Bascom. Another business mm -hmm. trip? Oh, Phil. Well, you see... You're always running off on a business you, well, trip. You see... Now, how long have you known about it? Well, I didn't tell... Why didn't you tell me when you came home? Well, there, I... The idea of letting me make plans and then spoiling them with a business well, trip. Well, Well, why don't you answer me? <laughs> yes. Well, it's my job, dear. After all, which is more important in a case like this, my job or your social engagements? Well, I'm sorry, dear. I suppose you're right. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Yes. Yeah. Well, I hope this is a lesson to you, Elizabeth. Well, it certainly is. Well, I'll call the children to dinner. I'd better help us, sir. You and your ideas. My ideas? Yes. So the trip with Mr. Bascom wasn't as dull as spending an evening with the Millers, huh? That's what you said. Yes, sir. And you said my brain was as sharp as a tack, sir. I was mistaken. I meant the size of the head of a tack. Oh. Now I'll miss seeing that Jane Russell movie and I'll have to take that dull trip. Well, sir, you did teach Mrs. Roberts that lesson, sir. And remember, <laughs> you can't have your cake and eat it too, sir. <laughs> Not even cheesecake. Let me see how you look before you go, Tommy. Oh, he looks very handsome, madam. A lot like Mr. Roberts. That's because he's wearing my new blue tie. Now, be careful of it, will you, Tommy, please? I'll be careful, Pop. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Goodbye Have dear. a good time. When do you leave for your train, dear? Now, don't rush me, Elizabeth. Don't rush me. The Millers certainly were disappointed when I told them. Well, how do I look, everybody? Just beautiful, dear. Beautiful. Here are the keys to the car, Nancy. And, oh, and be you. careful, please. When you pass the dress shop on Maple Street and look at the hats in the window, remember, there's a telephone pole on each side of the street. <laughs> I didn't hit either telephone pole. I didn't even come close. I hit that new fire hydrant. It's a menace. Yeah, that new fire hydrant's been there for three months, dear. It may be new to Mrs. Roberts, sir. She's never hit it before. <laughs> the fire department didn't have any business putting it there. And something's got to be done about it. Yeah, well, good night, Nancy, dear. Good night, dear. Good night, Mom. Good night, good night Miss Nancy. Yes, good night, everybody. Didn't they both look nice, Philip? Uh, yeah. Yeah, kids like that make a man proud to be a father. Oh, yes, sir. How I envy you, Mr. Roberts. Living here with you for the past few months has made me wish that I had a family. If there were only some way I could do it, sir. There's only one way. The hard way. 
<laughs> well, I better get my bag. I, I don't think I'll stay up. All this excitement is giving me a headache. Yes. Yes, you go to bed, dear. I'll get off without any trouble. I'll be in my room. And if I'm asleep when you go, goodbye, dear. And have a nice time with Mr. Bass. Yes, yes. Oh, such irony. Nice time with Mr. Bascom, she says. I'll go up and pack your bag, sir. Yes, I'll pack it. Go, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, guess I'll turn on the radio. That concludes our program of dance music from Meadowside. Here now is the latest news. Mayor Blanspan announced late tonight that the new fire hydrant on Maple Street would be removed in response to complaints from the women's club chairman, Mrs. Philip Roberts. <laughs> a check with the police department this evening reveals that a prowler was arrested at Main and Whistle Boulevard, trying to break and enter a drugstore. He told the police he was a giant fan and was trying to find an aspirin. The police gave him an aspirin. Prowler. A prowler. Oh, oh, what an idea. Now, if there was a prowler outside the house, and Liz knew about it, <laughs> she wouldn't let me go off on the train with Bascom tonight. Bascom would understand, and Liz would be so scared she'd insist I stayed home. <laughs> now, let's see. My hat yeah, brimmed down and pulled over my face. Now, there's this old top coat. You, my galoshes. Yeah, I can't tell footprints with these on. Yeah. Yeah, and now this screwdriver. I'll pry out a couple of windows and really make this look good. Oh, brother. Is the ground wet here on the flower beds? <laughs> oh, the ideas I get when my fertile, diabolical brain gets going. <laughs> There. Now to pry around this window a bit. Have to make this look realistic. Is that you, Higgins? Yes, madam. Are you going to your room now? Yes, madam. I packed Mr. Roberts' bag. You know, Higgins, when Mr. Roberts went on business trips, I used to be afraid. But I'm not anymore. It's really a pleasure to have you here. I feel so safe. I'm so glad, madam. <gasps> what was that? Do woodpeckers peck at night, madam? That's someone outside. Higgins. Uh, yes, madam. I'm scared. But you said you felt so safe with me around. What if that's a prowler? I heard about one on the radio tonight. Prowler, madam, outside our house? He wouldn't dare. But, but, but he did. <clears throat> I, sh I shall phone the police immediately, sir. Hurry, yes, Higgins. Madam, yes. Tell them to hurry or we'll all be killed. There. Yeah, those windows look tampered with. Now, oh, yes, sir. And plenty of footprints in the flower beds next to the house. Now, to, to fix up the other side of the house. Now, Bascom will go to Dewey Falls alone tonight, and I'll have the best excuse in the world. A wife that's afraid to be in the house alone. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, here's the dining room window. Oh, poor Higgins, he'll think the prowler's after the Queen Anne Silver Service. Yeah. That fixes that window. Now, into the back door. Oh, that darn car shining that spotlight over here. Spotlight? Holy mackerel, it's the police, and they're after... They're after... Me! No! Oh, no. Get the hat and coat off, quick. The galoshes and, and lie down, quick, quick. You're the police. How do you do? So glad you've come. Oh, yes, yes, we heard a prowler. That's why I rang you up. Oh, he fouled things up for me anyway. Oh, what a talent he has. Oh, you saw him then, and you, you took a shot at him. Oh, yes, I'm sure he didn't come in the house. You see, I've been here all the time. Yes, right over here in the closet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they shot at me. I thought it was a car backfiring. I'll kill that Higgins. Thank you, yes. Mrs. Roberts would appreciate it if you kept an eye on the house. Thank you very much. Good night. 
Oh, Higgins. Mr. Roberts. Wait till you hear what happened. Oh, what did happen? Uh, Tell me all about it. Didn't you hear the noise, sir? No, I didn't. I fell sound asleep. As a matter of fact, I'm glad I woke up. I I might have missed my train. You know what, sir? We had a prowler, sir. A prowler. I called the police. A prowler? In our yard? Yes, sir. Mrs. Roberts and I heard the noise upstairs. Oh, must have been an amateur prowler. The police say they took a shot at him. Yes. Oh, your hat and coats are on the floor. Allow me to hang them up. Oh, dear me. What's the matter? Oh, your hat, sir. Huh? There's a hole in it. (laughs) See here, sir, I'm poking my finger right through the hole. Oh, a hole through my hat? Mr. Roberts, sir, you're as white as a sheet. A hole in my hat? Oh, oh, Higgins. Higgins, me. A moth made that hole. That's it, moths. Took rather a large bite, didn't it, sir? (laughs) Well, I... I can't go with Bascom now, Higgins. Mrs. Roberts wouldn't hear of it. I'll... I'll just have to call him and cancel it. He'll... he'll understand. Yes. Higgins, did the police catch him? The prowler? I heard them shoot at him. He isn't dead, is he? Elizabeth, please. Don't bring up such gruesome subjects. Oh, Phil. I was scared to death. He was actually trying to break in our house. Oh, yes, madam. No doubt about it. I saw the scoundrel myself from the dining room window. What? Yes, sir. Well, what did he look like, huh? Well, he was a huge man. Very large. Sinister looking. Looked like a monster. Oh. Oh, Higgins, please, stop. Uh, Stop it, Higgins. Can't you see you're scaring Mrs. Roberts? Oh, yes, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, Did did I frighten you too, sir? Well, for a moment, but who's afraid of a monster? Yes. Oh, Phil, you just can't go now. You'll have to call Mr. Bascom and tell him you can't go. Why, certainly, dear. I wouldn't think of leaving now. I just couldn't stand being here without you. Why, of course, dear. I'm needed here to protect you and, and the children. The children are all out, sir. Well, they'll need protection when they get home. Oh, you're the master now, sir. Oh, Phil, I'm so glad you hadn't left yet. There's nothing Bascom could say or do now would make me go with him. No, sir. He couldn't make me go. Uh, I'll, I'll get it, Higgins. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Bascom. I was just going to call you. Now, you tell him you're not going. Uh, What, sir? You have indigestion? What happened? Oh, dear. Yeah. Yes, I know how bad you must feel. Imagine that store selling you cottage cheese with chives in it. Uh, What? You can't go. And you want me to go alone? With an unlimited expense account? Oh, but Mr. Bascom... Tell him, Philip. Uh, yes, darling. Uh, no, not, not you, Mr. Bascom. My, my, my wife. Uh... Oh. Oh, I have to go on. Huh? It's so important you must insist. Huh? Yeah. Order. Dewey Falls or else. Yes, sir. All right, sir. Good night. And remember, Mr. Bascom, don't take too much bicarbonate. Remember how it makes your eyes bulge. <laughs> Good night. Phil, you didn't tell him. I tried, Liz. You heard. It, it, it's a very important trip. I gather from your masterful tones, sir, Mr. Bascom isn't going. That's just it. The firm depends on me, Higgins. I, I, I can't let Bascom down now. He's sick. He's got indigestion. Well, I won't have it. You can't go. I'll call Mr. Bascom myself. Look, look Liz, he, he was pretty strong about it. I go or else it's my job. He'll fire me if I don't go. Well, which is more important, the safety of your family or your job? There I go again. Uh, pardon me for butting in, sir, but I believe I have a solution, sir. What is it? And you'd better be sure I'm going to like this idea. So far today, you're batting zero. Um, well, Mrs. Roberts uh, could go with you. Higgins, you're at bat and you just hit a foul ball. Higgins, that's a very sweet idea. Oh. I like it. Phil and I haven't been on a trip without the children since our honeymoon. Oh, yes, and I can imagine that they'd be a nuisance on a trip like that. <laughs> Oh, it's a fine idea, Phil. I think you should thank Higgins for it. Yes, dear. Thank you, Higgins. I'll see you later. You're welcome, sir. It was a real pleasure. Well, I'll get ready right away. Mr. Bascom won't mind a bit, and I can use his train reservation. Yes, dear. Higgins? Sir? Higgins, do you know what you've done to me this evening? Oh, yes, sir. I've enjoyed every minute of it, sir. 
Higgins, there wasn't any prowler outside. There wasn't? No, I was the prowler. Oh, I knew that, sir, the hole in your hat. And I saw you run around the house. What? You knew all the time? Oh, no, no, not when I called the police, sir, but I did when they arrived. All right, now you know. I did it because I wanted a good reason to stay home, something good to convince Bascom I shouldn't go. Oh, it was a very clever idea, sir. Yes, indeed. I'm only sorry we heard you, and I telephoned for the police. The police scared me to death. Mm. That wasn't bad enough, but when I got a chance to go on the trip alone and with an unlimited expense account, you had to suggest that Mrs. Roberts go with me. Well, I'd rather thought that was clever of me, sir. Oh, it was. Very clever. But you don't understand, sir. Don't you see, now that Mrs. Roberts is going on the trip with you, she can't admit that she knew that you were the prowler. She knew that I was the prowler, too? Oh, yes, sir. You see, Mr. Roberts, you still have the screwdriver you used in your hand. What? And your muddy galoshes are right there on the floor. Holy mackerel. Of course. Now that she's going with you, she'll never be able to mention it. Oh. Oh, Higgins, I... I I don't know what to say. Oh, let's see, sir. You might repeat that remark you made about the tack. All right. I will. Higgins, your brain is as sharp as a tack. Yeah, that's the one, sir. Yes. Hiya, Pop. Hi, Higgins. Boy, what a party. I'm so full of ice cream, I jingle like a good humor truck when I walk. The tie looks in perfect shape, Master Thomas. Yep. Here you are, Pop. Not a spot on it. <laughs> I took it off when I ate. Boy, you should see my shirt. Uh, thank you for taking such good care of my tie, Tommy. I, uh, uh, now, your mother and I are leaving for a short business trip to Dewey Falls. Higgins will stay here with you. Okay. Have a good trip, Pop. Thanks. I better get up to bed. Hey, good night, Tommy. You see, sir, your fears about the tie were pointless. Hello, Daddy. I'm home early. Pudgy was just impossible. He's so stupid. Well, what did he do now? We went for a ride in the park to look at the moon hanging over the lake, and he had to go home. What for? Well, he was sitting there with his mouth hanging open, and a big moth flew in and choked him. Oh, my word, rather a busy night for moths, isn't it? <laughs> Too bad it wasn't a bat. Nancy, your mother and I are going on a business trip to Dewey Falls tonight, just, just for a day or two. Oh, well, have a nice time, Daddy. Oh, the car's in the garage and in perfect condition. Oh. Good night. Uh, thank you. Good night, dear, and thank you for the car. Well, Mr. Roberts, sir, there's your other worry all straightened out. And you'll have a lovely trip with Mrs. Roberts to look forward to, sir. Yes. What a romantic idea indeed. Huh? A second honeymoon. Just the two of you together, sir. Oh, do make it a lovely trip, sir. Your cozy hotel suite. Soft lights. Low music. Dinner for two. Doesn't it sound lovely? Oh. Oh, yes, Higgins. Yes, it does. No man was ever henpecked under those circumstances, sir. Oh, Higgins, I, I think I'm going to enjoy this trip. Yes, sir. A second honeymoon. How I envy you, Mr. Roberts. Oh. Oh, Higgins, you're so romantic. Uh, why didn't you ever get married? Oh, I was in love once, sir, uh, yes. Uh, she was lovely. Well, why didn't she get married? Oh, I waited and waited, but she never asked me. <laughs> this has been a Tiggin, Sir, a new comedy series starring Harry McNaughton with Vinton Hayworth and Vera Allen as Mr. and Mrs. Roberts. It's Higgins, Sir was directed and transcribed by Paul Harrison and written by Rick Bullard. This is Lionel Rico speaking. Join Jack Pearl and Mimi Benzel next on NBC.